Hi guys, welcome back to iCode. In iOS 17, Apple introduced Tip Kit through which we can show tips in our applications. These tips are for making the features discoverable. The exact same thing that is achieved with tooltip in browsers. When you hover the cursor over any element, you get to see some text explaining that what that feature is. The same thing is now possible in iOS apps with TipKit. And not just iOS, but iPad, tvOS, watchOS, all the platforms support TipKit. So without wasting more time on introduction, let's jump into the topic and see that what these tips look like and how can we implement them. Also, there's an important announcement towards the end of the video, so please stay with me. We'll first see a bit of theory, hardly a couple of minutes, and we'll then move to Xcode to see them in action. So first things first, how these tips look like. So the tips can be shown as a popover pointing to the feature that you want to make discoverable. Assume it a button for now. Or you can show them inline for some kind of behavior which is not visible directly. Say long press. Now these are not the rules. Of course you can use the inline presentation style for CTA too, but just to give you some use cases for making it clear. Next, can we customize these tips? Yes we can. A lot of customizations are possible with the tips and all of these are very easy. The tip can be as simple as having just a title or a good looking view having title, message, image, CTA, background color matching to your app theme, positioning of the CTAs, a lot can be done. We'll see all this in a minute. Next, to what level do we have the control of the visibility of these tips? A lot. And probably this is the best part. So Apple has given a kind of rule engine through which you can set the rules for controlling that when a tip should be shown. It can be as simple as show the tip only if a user is logged in. Or even as complex to show the tip only if user has come to this screen at least five times in last seven days plus he is logged in, plus he has not made any purchase, plus something else, plus something else, etc. Very complex. So essentially you can club multiple conditions with predicates and you get the complete control for implementing your custom logic. So your analytics can come into the play, your backend can decide the visibility, basically everything in your control. Next, are there any guidelines for using these tips? Yes. As per the Apple's human interface guidelines, tips should be actionable, instructional, and easy to read or remember. They shouldn't be used for showing errors, so don't use them as toasts. Don't use them for showing promotional content, say offers. Don't make them too complicated to read. And now an important question. Can we use these tips in UI kit or will they only work with Swift UI? Well, the answer to this is, Yes, TipKit can be used with UIKit, but should you use it? I won't suggest that. Reason being, the entire implementation of TipKit is in Swift UI, and the tips that you will be creating, essentially the views, they are also going to be the Swift UI views. So to use them with UIKit, you will have to set up the hosting view and will have to deal with the weird challenges that comes with it, especially the navigation part, the presentation and the dismissal part. People have tried it and the experience has not been smooth. More importantly, TipKit has been introduced in iOS 17. So by the time you will make the minimum target of your application as 17, which is at least a couple of years, hopefully you would be having your application in Swift UI. So you do not need to worry about that in my opinion. Now let's move to Xcode. We'll use this application for implementing the tips today. And the use case is that we are having a list of flights. On this screen, let's say we have implemented a functionality of uh, say filters. On click of this button, the screen is being presented, which would be essentially having your filters for filtering the flights based on the duration, the price, number of stops, etc. Now let's say that you want to show a tip for this filter button. You want to make this functionality discoverable by the user and you want to nudge them that they have this filters button over here, which they can use for filtering the flights. So how can we do that? The first thing that we need to do is to create a tip. So for that I am having a file over here. It's an empty file as of now. The only thing that I have done is imported the tip kit. So let's create our first tip over here, which would be a struct, say filter tip. And this would confirm to the protocol, which is tip. Now if you look at this protocol, 
it is having a title id message image we'll use all that but the message is optional the image is optional the mandatory property over here is the title so let's go and implement that and this can be a computed property through which we'll return the text that's it for now we'll add more components to it we'll add message image and all that but for now let's leave it here so we do have a filter tip that is the tip that we want to show on our filters button what next so after creating the tip we need to configure our application for using the tip kit so for that so let's tell about that configuration over here and this is going to be a task let's pass the configuration if you see this takes an array of configuration options for now we can set just a couple of things one would be the display frequency this can be daily early immediately or even the custom time if you want for now i'll set it as immediate because we want to see it in action the next thing that i'll set is the store location so if a user has seen the tip once and we do not want to show it again it should be stored somewhere you can treat it as our user defaults and essentially it's the same thing so let me pass the data store location and this would be the application default i missed a comma here so till now we have passed the necessary configuration to our application for using the tip kit and have created a tip which is having only title for now which would be shown on our filters button now to embed it over there let's move to our filter button also one more thing that we can do here is reset our data store because in the development process we'll we'll run the application number of times we'll do the testing part so this can be done in the preview also but for now i'll just do it over here i'll reset the data store so that the previous runs do not affect our implementation and then in the flight options screen which is essentially this, this screen i go to the navigation bar button over here which is my this button the trailing button which presents the sheet for the filter so over here it's as easy as pop over tip and this expects a tip so as of now we are not having a tip since we just created it so let's take the instance of our tip which would be let filter tip which is our filter tip and let's initialize it filter tip so now that we have the instance of our filter tip let's pass it over here so as i mentioned we have a couple of options for showing the tip it can be either inline or it can be a popover tip so here i have used the popover tip which will show our filter tip with an arrow over the filter cta now let's try running it so that's our tip which is nudging the user which is conveying the information that here's the filter button which can be used for for filtering the flights now this looks very plain so let's add more components to it as we discussed so in our filter tip we can add a couple of more things the one is message what else can we add there can be an image which will take an image let's pass a system image since i do not remember the names we can use sf symbols let's try something as filter now for copying the name you can directly hit command shift c and can directly paste it over here so now we have title we have message we have image let's see that how it looks 
so this shows the the title message and the image but as we discussed that the tips should be actionable which is one of the guidelines in the human interface guidelines for the tips so let's try adding an action and again it goes it is as simple as adding the actions which expects an array in which you can give the action and for now i'm just adding a text over here say show filters i have not actually added the action but just to show that how the action can be added how the action can be passed to the tips and how the tips will look after that and before moving to other customizations or or the part where we can control the visibility of these tips let's look at the other presentation style which we talked about where we can show the tips in line for the cases where you do not want to point over a particular cta or or any other component so let's try that and for that i'll create another tip let's call it pair options tip so assume that on the long press of the card you want to show a bottom sheet which will tell about other pair options available for that flight so for that the title of course which would be explore other pair options and let's add the message to Now let's see that how can we show this step in line so for that let's go back to our flight options screen let's create another instance which is our pair options tip and in our v stack where we are having a scroll view let's add another component which would be a tip A tip view and this expects a tip and let's give it a run so you see that both of our tips have been presented at the same time for now i am clicking outside of this tip to dismiss it and this is our tip for the fair options but since we do not want both of our tips to be shown at the same time we do not want to bombard our user with with the tips throughout the screen so there's a there's a way for gracefully handling that which we'll look at in a minute but before that let's look at the customizations possible for this inline tip which we have used for showing the fair options so one thing that you should keep in mind is that tip view is also a swift ui view so essentially almost all the modifiers that you apply for your swift ui views they should be applicable on your tip view as well and apart from that there are some dedicated modifiers given for the tip view for example setting the background color so let's say i want to set the background of the tip which matches with the theme of my application for that i can use the tip background in this style i can pass the color for which i am having theme dot inline tip background what else can we do we can set the padding as well and now let's look at this so we see that the padding has been applied the background color has been changed what else can be done and how can we do that so as i mentioned earlier that a lot of customizations can be done and if you see here we have something called tip view style which expects a style and if we can create a custom style which we can pass here then a lot of customization is possible so just for showing that how the tip styles can be applied i'll use the code provided by apple in the tip kits documentation i'll paste it over here and i have copied this from the documentation of the tip kit essentially this shows that how you can customize how you can provide the style for your tips so this is a struct say headline tip view style in which we are mentioning that the the header should be saying tip there should be a cross mark and you can get an idea with this that a lot of customizations are possible with this so let's use it over here which is our header tip view style and let's see that how it changes our tip so now we see that 
the the text color has changed the background has changed the alignment of the cross mark has also changed we are also having a text saying tip and a separator below that so the idea is that you can customize the tips to a great extent by writing your custom styles so that was about the customization part now what will happen when the user will dismiss this tip how are we going to adjust our ui with that and the good part is that we do not need to do anything for that everything is being managed by the tip kit is being handled by the tip kit so once user dismisses this tip our ui will adjust automatically when the tip will be removed from the screen so let's go back and let's understand that how can we control the visibility of the tips so you see that this time the inline tip is not visible anymore and that is because we dismissed it so whenever a user dismisses a tip it is automatically handled by the tip kit that it shouldn't be shown anymore so that's the reason that when we came back to this screen the inline tip is not visible as far as the other tip our popover tip for the filter tip is being considered that it is being shown every time that is because we haven't dismissed it yet and that is for a reason because i wanted to show that how can we control the visibility how can we pass the custom rules for deciding the tips visibility so let's move on to that part so in our filter tip where we added the title message image and action there's something called as rules these rules are basically going to be the custom logic that you will implement for handling the visibility of the tips it will be very specific to your use case to your application and for this demo for understanding that how rules work let's implement a couple of them so basically there are two types of rules one is parameter based rules and one is event based rules for understanding parameter based rules you can assume that they work on a flag based criteria sort of so let's say if the tip should be shown when a user is logged in it depends on your variable that is is user logged in based on that you can decide that the tip should be shown or not while the event based rules rely on the specific events whether those events have occurred or not so let's say you want to show the tip only when user has viewed that screen for at least three times so for that viewing of that screen can be treated as one event and when that event would have occurred three times that is your rule would have been justified that it would be shown i understand that it can sound a little overwhelming so let's see it in action so we'll use the macros over here for setting the rule as you see it expects an event and then your custom logic that is the body so let's create an event first this would be an event and i can give it an id let's say flight option screen viewed so that's my event and now for setting up my rule i'll have to specify the event and then the logic so i can mention that event dot donations dot count is equal to equal to three let's say let me fix the okay so now something new over here is donations donations are basically a track of the event occurrences so whenever that event will occur we'll donate something to that event and we'll later use the donations for checking that whether the rules are being satisfied or not so as we have done here that if the event dot donations dot count is equal to equal to three our rule should be satisfied and then the tip should be shown so how will the donations count change well, it will change when we'll donate to that event and when are we going to donate to that event so as the name suggests flight option screen viewed so basically on the on appear of this flight option screen and this is going to be a task so our filter tip dot dot donate so this is going to increment the count of the donations of the flight option screen viewed event now let's see it in action the inline tip was shown because we are resetting the data store on the launch of the application that we shouldn't be doing so because this is only for the testing purpose i'll remove it for now and as expected the tip has not been shown because the donations count has just incremented to one so let's go back come again let's go back come again 
and since the count has now reached to three that was specified in our rule the tip has now been presented so this was a very basic and a simple rule but as i mentioned earlier in this video you can actually use predicates and a whole lot of conditions to make these rules complex for satisfying your use cases that when the tip should be shown and when when should you hide it now let's say that after looking at this tip user got to know about the filter functionality of your application and user taps on the filter cta after that you do not want to show this tip so let's look at the current behavior and then we'll fix it so i tapped on this filter button the filter got presented now if i come back the tip is still being presented so how to handle that by invalidating the tip so that can be done where the action is being performed so over here i can filter tip dot invalidate and we can mention the reason that the action has been performed so we do not need this tip anymore The tip has been shown let's click on this now this has been presented and the tip got invalidated now so if i come back now the tip is not being shown anymore so that is how you can invalidate the tips there's a lot more to this there's a lot of customizations that can be done very complex rules can be set for testing purposes there are so many methods given where you can reset the data store you can decide on specific tips that should be shown you can actually create a chain of tips for creating the app tour of the application and a lot can be done i leave the links for the tipkit documentation and the link of the wwdc video for the tipkit in the description you can check them for more details so that's pretty much for this video and now the announcement part very soon we are bringing a series of interview videos these videos are not just having the interview questions but they have been made with the focus on entire interview journey of a candidate the series is having the videos for exploration round, tech round, system design round and the hiring manager round. So you will get a glimpse of entire journey. We will be releasing this series very soon so please stay tuned. And if you like the content of this channel, please consider subscribing. That's it for now. Happy coding.